Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup, 16th September 2017. I am Sagan Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit, a company based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested, you may visit our website www.superiorprofit.co and click on the About menu. Let's start with the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on superior profits trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, we we'll look at oil, gold, USA broad market ETFs using Q technical charts. Then we we'll look at broad market internal analysis, sector and internal analysis using graphs, ranking table and charts. Along the way, we may look at some of the posts from our traders community and look for potential trades for the upcoming week. Q&A is throughout the session. You may ask questions and I will try to answer them as I go along. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let me start with live system. We start with US oil. We are looking at US oil using weekly backdrop template on the left hand side, daily hop on template on the right hand side. If we look at the weekly chart, we see that we had a strongly bullish candle this week. Cyan color that is bullish and the shape is also bullish, closing very close to the week's high. In the daily chart, we see that it created a higher high, then it created a higher low. And on this day, that is Wednesday, it gave us a cyan color candle. That was a trigger for potential go with flow long trade setup. However, the entry price for that signal was a bit far from the stop loss. So if somebody was trying to take the go with flow long trade at the close of this day, the risk could be slightly bigger than potential reward. Our potential reward point will be the declining white direction line, which is the same level of the upper boundary lines. So one could avoid entering the trade at the end of the day. However, if somebody was keeping an eye on US oil using real time fine tune chart, then on this Wednesday, as price was going up above early range high, one could take a long trade and that would probably have acceptable reward risk ratio. Energy was already up from the previous week. We could see that from QH sector industry analysis. Therefore, it was possible for an alert trader to look for a go with flow long trade on US oil and take it using fine tune. Let's look at the fine tune chart. I'm now looking at US oil using fine tune chart. I'm using 10 minute interval so that I can fit in last three, four days movement on one screen. Our go with flow long signal came in the daily chart on Wednesday, that is this day. We see that the price opened at blue line, which was above previous day's high, the green line, the real time pivot lines. So this was a gap up day. And after market opened, the early range high and the early range low were formed. Early range low coincided with the day's open 
that is the blue line. And after early range high was formed, price went above that. We had an entry signal on this candle that was an early range breakout signal. And in this case, because it happened after gap up day, it was also a gap long trade signal. Because we were already looking for go with flow long trade, now we can see we could enter long at around this price. For intraday stop, we could put stop just below early range low. Usually we put it below early range low, but in this case, if we put below early range low, then we'll get stopped out on this day. So coming back to the at a glance chart on US oil, we now conclude that trying to enter the trade at the close of Wednesday was too late and trying to enter it using early range fine tune chart using the standard techniques would have stopped out with small loss. At the right edge, it is bullish both in weekly and daily, but stop loss is too far so we will not try to take any swing trade in oil at this point. Let's look at gold. Gold had a big run up both in daily and we can see that more clearly in weekly. The backdrop candle colors were cyan for many weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight weeks in a row. This week, it has yellow candle color and it has a bear release signal. In the daily chart, it came back to the value area. We don't have any standard trade setup right now, but if price goes up from here, or even better, if it comes to the memory support lines and go back up from there, then we might have very low risk go with flow long trade opportunity. You may keep an eye on that. We'll look at the broad market ETFs now and you will see that several of them made all time highs. We also have very bullish indication from broad market internal studies. However, there is some hesitation in my mind to say that this is a very successful breakout. I will explain that. Let me start with the broad market internal analysis first, and then I will come back to the ETFs. Every week we look at broad market internals using NASDAQ composite index weekly chart on the left hand side and NYSE composite index weekly chart on the right hand side. Because we are using broad indices here and weekly charts, this analysis is to be used for long-term investing decisions, not for swing trading and certainly not for day trading. We see that NASDAQ Composite Index made a new all-time high and so did NYSE. From the candle shapes, we can see that NYSE was stronger this week than NASDAQ, which was true one week ago also. Prior to that, NASDAQ was stronger. We keep seeing this happening that sometimes NASDAQ is stronger, sometimes SPY is stronger, and sometimes DIA is stronger that is continuing. In any case, both of them made new all-time highs, clearly in uptrend, both of them. And the internals are also very strong now. Though the earlier peaks were not breached, for this week, all the six internals went up. And all of them closed positive. So based on this, we can conclude that the broad market indices 
are bullish, the internals continue to be weak because they are not able to breach previous highs. However, this week, all the internals are bullish. This shows the bullish strength. However, why did I say that the ETFs are giving me some reason for hesitation? Let me explain that. Let's look at DIA first. This is clearly the strongest of the three ETFs. In the weekly chart, we see that we have a very bullish shape candle and candle color is also bullish, cyan backdrop color. It closed very close to the week's high, almost at week's high. And we see the same strength in daily chart. Remember, we had taken a day trade on this candle using early range fine tune template. I posted this trade in the community and I mentioned that on this occasion, we would close the entire trade at the end of the day. We will not try to carry forward part of the position because it was very close to the memory support lines. That was a very good decision and respecting the memory lines always helps or most of the times helps. Very rarely they are broken immediately. And looking back now we see that the memory is held pretty well and dia went up from there making it the strongest of the three or including IWM the four ETFs. However, if we now look down to the activity, we see that activity in recent days, the up days, which are in green color, had never been very or extreme high. In fact, if we look back, we see that the very or extreme high activity bars are mostly on down days. And we see that in the weekly chart also. That is one reason for hesitation. Let's look at IWM. IWM went up just like the other ETFs. The weekly candle shape is very bullish and the backdrop color is also bullish. It closed almost at week's high. The strong move is seen in the daily chart also. And now looking back, we see that after the bullish headwind, it went up very nicely. This keeps on happening quite often that looking back, we can see that bullish headwind was very useful. And the more we see that, the more confidence we'll have for two tasks. One is if we had a short position to tighten stop or exit it, and then if few more signals, that is the unambiguous checklists are made, we could take a long position as well. And in this case, we mentioned price went up after exhaustion from wide direction line. That could be a reason to take the long trade. But looking back, isn't it very surprising how the headwind signal could catch the very bottom. Here, we see that activities are more bullish than DIA. That is the small cap stocks are doing better in recent periods. We see the green bars are bigger on average than red bars. However, the full strength is not there. The very or extreme high bars continue to be red color, most of them. Though it is showing better bullishness in activity than dia. Let's look at QQQ. QQQ made new all-time high. However, 
if we see the weekly chart we see that price couldn't close above the watermark resistance level and in daily chart if we draw the watermark levels by switching to the advanced open template here also we see that price couldn't close above the watermark level activity was high on both thursday and friday now if it was strongly bullish market then i would expect that with these two heavy activity not very or extreme high but heavy activity days price would close above the previous resistance that is above the watermark resistance that didn't happen it effectively couldn't breach the high made on this day that is another reason i have some hesitation to jump onto the bullish camp and similar concerns are there from spy chart also let me look at that just like in QQQ. Here also, price really couldn't go much above this watermark resistance level. If we count the ticks, then of course it closed at all time high. But we see in weekly chart, there is a small upper tail. It is at a level where the bearish headwind came earlier in the weekly chart. And the other signal is in the activities. For Thursday and Friday, there were heavy activities. Though the chart seemed to be bullish on the candles pattern, we can see actually both of them were down days. So when an instrument seems to go up on the candle chart, but activity shows that it is actually down, and the activities are heavy, it is not fully bullish from my experience. So if at all I had to take a long trade, I will wait for price to break decisively, come back and then make a higher low. That will give me a low risk, go with flow, long trade opportunity. I am not a fund of breakout trading so even if it breaks out right now i will not try to enter a long trade immediately the activity patterns and the inability of multiple etfs to decisively break above watermark resistance is making me hesitant to say that it is strongly bullish market though multiple ETFs are at long time high. There is a comment that some of the ETFs are bearish. I will not say it is bearish unless we look at the difference between Thursday, Friday like that. Because SPY is making higher high, higher low. That is the technical definition of uptrend. So I have to say they are in uptrend. It is not bullish enough for me to buy new stocks at least the stocks that are in pendulum high but i will not say it is bearish because it is making higher high higher low and all the etfs are actually bullish let's now go back to sector and industry analysis from the sector analysis also we'll see apparently the market is very strong every week we look at 11 sectors performance over three review periods. The red bar indicates performance of this week, yellow bar performance of one week before the red bar and blue bar performance of two weeks before the yellow bar. Together they constitute four weeks or about one month of performance. This week, 10 of the 11 sectors gained, showing strength of the overall market. I think this text is not right. Utilities decline this week. 
ignore this text. Utilities decline. Utilities were very strong in recent months. However, from about two weeks ago, I started mentioning in the weekly market roundups that I was looking at the stocks and they were almost all at pendulum highs and were starting to even roll over. So I was mentioning better not to enter long trade in utilities at this time and utilities declined this week. I don't know if there were short opportunities, but one may be us about any long entry. Financials is a big gainer. Is there possible buy opportunity? We may investigate further using QA. I didn't have time to look for any financial potential long trades. Energy gained for the second week. As we can see from the red bar and the yellow bar, we could identify this strength in previous roundups itself. And we could probably be ahead of many traders. How we could identify that? We could identify that from QH, sector analyst and industry analyst, where we started seeing the energy sector and several energy related industries were starting to turn from magenta to cyan. We identified some energy stocks in the past few sessions. Maybe we'll have a look at them, looking back, see how they perform. Telecom is an interesting sector this week. It was the biggest decliner last week, and this week it has the biggest gain. So that is a sharp turnaround. This sector was lagging for a long time. We may keep an eye on stocks in this sector to see if there are potential bottom catching opportunities. We are now looking at five days best performing industries. Energy sector strength is reflected in multiple related industries being top performers. Includes natural gas and drilling, coal, natural gas, oil and gas exploration and production, and renewable energy. All of them went up by significant percentages. From 5.5 to 11.5. Pretty large size gain in all these energy industries. Oil and gas drilling was one of the best performers in the previous week. So it came in the same graph last week also. And this week it is the very best performer. Went up by 11.6 percentage. So it is ranking one now in QH industry analyst. And we could see this turn around well ahead of others using the Q edge. Let's have a look at Q edge. Every time we open Q edge, it analyzes currently to 55 industries across multiple review periods from month one to month 12 for monthly periods, and then more frequently for the recent periods over 10 days, five days, two days, and one day. It then applies rank to the industries, one to the strongest one, 255 to the weakest one, and also applies a heat map. The result is a heat map and ranking table that we can analyze. Can click this button, sector industry button, to get the data in industry work area, where we can slice, dice, sort, filter, etc. For swing trading, we are interested to look at the five days period this is five days moving window. And if we sort in ascending order, we get the strongest industries at the top. Oil and gas drilling is now number one. And as I was telling, we could catch the very bottom of this industry by looking at QH. You can see even now for the previous periods, 
from month to onwards, it is very weak. Magenta color. We can look at the rank, but for me, the color is enough. And we see between month two to month one, there was a large jump in rank from 228 to one. The same thing was playing out across the finer time periods of five days, 10 days, etc. And using that, we could pinpoint the exact turning point when oil and gas drilling was starting to go up. Based on that analysis, we had actually discussed hp.n and esv.n. We identified them from drill down from QH. We had looked at their fundamentals using Q vital and on the charts, they had bullish headwind signs. Let me start with the charts and then I will go back to Q vital. I think last week or the week before, I had discussed both these stocks, HP and ESV, and I had mentioned that both of them were displaying bullish headwind signals. And in case of HP, it had a false downside breakout. So if somebody kept an eye on that, one could take a very profitable trade. Again, looking back, we see that the headwind signals were pretty effective. This was easier to take probably because there was memory support in the weekly and headwind in the weekly as well. Now, if we look back, I have to say that there was no standard trade setup. However, I will also explain how an alert queue trader could benefit from such situations. We had already noticed the bullish headwinds in earlier sessions, so we would be ready to take a long trail. And we could wait for the false breakout to happen and take the box long trade setup. This day, price closed above the watermark level. So the false breakout was completed on this day. However, we still didn't have very or extreme high activity and the candle had an upper tail. Next day, I already had a false breakout completed and using the early range breakout technique, I could take a trade somewhere in the lower end of this candle. That is one way one could try to take this trade. However, there was no standard Q trade setup. Standard setups are easy to trade and they are very unambiguous. They are also very low risk trades and they are all swing trades. They don't necessarily need us to look for early range breakout. My preferred way is actually to take the trades near end of day. As I mentioned earlier, that means I know exactly how much time I need to spend in front of computer, maybe 10 to 15 minutes before market close. If I wait for early range breakout, I don't know exactly when that will happen. But I know there are other alert traders who are happy to take early range breakout trades. So they could have captured the up move in this stock using the way I explained. And keeping an eye on memory line and headwind signals would probably give them more confidence. Let's look at ESV. There is a comment on HP that it was a double bottom, but why don't I use the signal? Actually, this is a box trade setup. All the conditions are met except that there was no heavy activity, very or extreme. The box trade setup needs the very or extreme high activity. Otherwise, I try to avoid those trades. All the Q trade setups 
are devised after a lot of study and they are all low risk entries. If it was a trend following trade like go with flow trend, then I would take without the confirmation from activity. You know the unambiguous checklist for go with flow, it doesn't have any requirement on activity. However, for bounce and box trade, which are reversal trades, I would prefer to see activity supporting the reversal because I'm trying to catch the very bottom just that it closed above the watermark level is not enough for me and you know looking bad it looks like a double bottom very clearly but on that day it was not so certain so I would take only if it closed above the watermark support level and if there was very or extreme high activity looking back is a different thing by doing that i am aligning one more edge that is activity before taking a reversal trade this is true for box trade and bounce trade setups both of these are reversal trades and both of these are fast reversal trades stock was going down and suddenly turned up or stock was going up suddenly turned down that is different from the headwind short or long trades those are also reversal trades but those are somewhat slower that's why for them i don't have any requirement on activity in the unambiguous checklist the more you go through the charts and look at the checklist you will understand the reason behind activity being in some of them and not in others on this day, there was heavy activity. However, by the end of the day, price was very close to upper boundary. So my style is not to try to enter on those days. It's already very close to upper boundary and my stop loss will be very far. ESP also displayed bullish headwind in weekly and daily, and then it went up. If we remove the watermark levels, then you will see that we were alert from this day onward. Then it went up, you can say made a higher high and then on this cyan candle, we had a valid go with flow long trade setup. Stop loss will be just below recent low target will be the declining yellow line or the upper boundary and after a few days on this Wednesday that target was hit. So this was a standard Q trade setup and I prefer to wait for those because they don't take me time. I can just run Sona near end of day, identify them and take the trade and because they are low risk trades. Now let's look at the fundamentals of these two stocks. From QH, I am using the drill down to identify the industry stocks. It's retrieving the data. That is how I had identified on the last market roundup also where we identified these two opportunities. I can see both ESP and HP here. Now let us go to the Q Vital, the latest version. It has many new features. I will try to come back to the features at the end of today's class. As usual, I am putting the manual list from QA, clicking the calculator button to calculate the vital statistics. I used to use the phrase vital statistics, but I was going to scorecard. Now the vital tab is complete and we can go to the vital tab. Here, not only the scores are there, but also some other essential information. Only the essential scores and other information. So if we look at HP, instantly we can identify from the color coding that it has very attractive valuation, also has a potential for short squeeze. 
ESV also has potential for short squeeze. And see one interesting thing, when I first analyzed ESV in the last market roundups, that time the relative valuation was in blue because price was at lower level. Now price had gone up, so it is not blue anymore. It is at the marginal level. I think if it was 71, it would turn into blue. But this demonstrates that as a stock goes up more and more, the relative valuation score reduces. That is extremely useful for long-term investors also, maybe even more for long-term investors. For example, I took a position in some of the Singapore banks when they were at very low level in price and therefore valuation was optimal. And as they went up and up and up, I could keep an eye on Q Vital and see when they are not optimally valued anymore. And I will be cautious from that time onward from a fundamental standpoint. And of course, I will look at the Q charts to see how the swings are happening, how it is going up, if a wind is coming or not. But from fundamental angle, if you keep an eye on a long position and see that it is becoming overvalued, you may be more careful on that position. But no need to exit the position unless the chart tells us to do so. Once we are in a position, we can make money as long as the stock goes up. That's the only way we make money. We don't make money looking at fundamentals. We make decisions based on fundamentals here using technical fundamental industry, everything. But once we are in a trade, if the stock is going up, we, we just hold on to it with probably trailing stock. So HP currently looks more attractive. There are other stocks which look attractive in terms of valuation. You may keep an eye on them. And E may be one. Back to best performing industries. Tire and rubber. QH shows that this industry was lagging for a long time. And when it started to turn around, there were probably some very profitable Q trade setups. I didn't have time to look for any Q trades in tire and rubber. Maybe we can do it together at the end of the class. We are now looking at the five days worst performing industries. Professional services is one of the worst performers. In QH, it is now showing up as underperforming over many periods. Let's go to QH. If you see professional services, it is now magenta over all the periods from last 12 months to one day period. So that caught my attention and I drilled down. I got a list of stocks and when I looked at them, say let's start with peers of Equifax. We see that it has retrieved 15 peers. We can calculate the vital statistics. So we have a number of stocks. I plotted them on Q charts and I didn't see weak stocks. Many of them were strong. It has refreshed the data now. Now, if you see that, then the drop may be because of one stock going down and the price performance step will clearly show that. For any industry, in QH, if you drill down to the stocks, one thing you may do is use QVital to do their analysis and look at the price performance step. And you will see, other than the first stock, that is Equifax, none of the stocks are actually showing any 
negative percentage. Over the last 12 months, hardly any negative percentage. And even if you look at the recent periods, other than the last one, POTN, maybe last two, not many of them are weak in recent periods also. Why then the industry had a very big drop? The answer is found from Equifax. It dropped 35% over 10 days and 25% over five days. And it was also compounded partially by POTN. Not sure if it is a large cap stock. We can look at the basic info. No, it is small stock, 31 million. So pot network holdings probably didn't have much impact, but Equifax is a relatively larger company. And because of its sudden and very large drop, it affected the QH ranking of the industry. So I could see the weakness, but looking at the price tab in Q Vital for the drill down stocks, I could understand that though the industry is showing as weak in QH, actually it is not weak because of industry related weakness. It is because of Equifax sudden drop. And Equifax, you know, had a very large breach of millions, hundreds of millions of customers' data. That is why it dropped suddenly. So why I went into that is we have to sometimes look at the information and combine the insights together from QAG and QVital before deciding that is it an industry where we can short stocks or not. The answer would be that no. Professional services will not be an industry where we will look for short stocks. And you could look at some of the other peer stocks on Q charts, you will see they are pretty strong actually. Every week we also look at biggest rank improvements. Usually they tend to be best performers in subsequent weeks. Telecom sector strength is reflected in multiple related industries, which are now top rank improvers. Diversified telecom services, wireless telecom services, telecom services, integrated telecom services, four of them. There was a potential box long trade in at and And again, one had to be alert to catch it using real time fine tune chart on Tuesday, 12 September. It was also a possible dividend play with 5.28% dividend yield. As seen from QVital, valuation is optimal. Also, you may watch out for JCOM. It has both optimal valuation and strong growth in QVital and is forming a base on Q hop on chart. Let's look at at and see how one could buy the stock on 12th September box long trade setup and then we look at JCOM. Here we see in the weekly chart price made a false downside breakout. That is clearer in daily chart also. It came down heavily. In fact gave a go with flow short trade setup on this magenta candle that was very profitable and that time Telecom industry and sector both were very weak. So we could be confidently taking this short trade or even on this candle. For none of them, the stop was hit. The lower boundary was hit in few days. So that will be a very profitable short trade. And then we saw that price came to watermark, came below that on this day, it tried to close above it but failed. Even one day before, we saw it had a very bullish shape candle. Heavy activity came on this day. So if we were keeping an eye on at and on this day, again using early range breakout, one could enter the long trade 
somewhere in the middle or lower end of the candle and then hold on to it for a nice profit. Why one would be even more willing to take the trade on this day is because that was a gap up day. And we can look at the chart to see if there was a profitable entry using fine tune chart. Let's look at that one, two, three, four days ago on AT&T. So using industry insight and the bullish shape candles of last few days and that it was going to make a false downside breakout, we are already looking for a long trade. So on Tuesday, soon after market open, early range high and early range low were formed. We can see the opening price was at this level, which was higher than previous day's high, the green level. So it was a gap up day. So on a gap up day, if price goes above early range high, that is a gap long trade setup. So we had an intraday long trade setup and we were already looking for a swing long trade. Combining those, a trader who was watching at and using fine tune chart could easily take a long trade around this level, put a stop just below early range low. In this case, I see there were multiple real time pivot levels. So one could keep the stop just below the magenta level also. When price went to this level, the reward would be this distance, which was more than the risk distance and at least partial profit could be booked. Because one was looking for a swing trade, one could hold on to partial position. And when next day started, the stop loss will not be using any intraday pivot anymore. It will be using the daily chart. That stop would never be hit and one may still be in the trade at the end of Friday. This is how using the insight from industry and the daily charts, one could be ready to take a long trade and use fine tune to enter the long trade precisely. So one could do that on this yellow candle, which is already very profitable by now. Let's look at JCOM. JCOM fell down after falling down for six weeks. It is not able to go down anymore. It's moving sideways. The backdrop weekly candle color turned from magenta to yellow. This week's candle is still very indecisive with very, very narrow body in the weekly chart. But in the daily chart, we see more clearly that after the sharp drop associated with the earnings, it is forming a base. It already has higher lows as confirmed by the support line, memory support line. It is at a swing low. If price goes up from here, it may give us a very low risk long trade opportunity. And we see on Friday, activity was bullish and extremely high. Why we would still not take the long trade is because there is no standard Q trade setup. The traffic light candle color is still red. If next week it starts to go up, one might try to enter using Q fine tune for a more precise entry. Let's look at the fundamentals of these stocks. We'll try to retrieve the peers of at and Now it shows the peer list size at the top right hand corner. Retrieve the fundamentals. The peer list size is shown here also. And the status of retrieval of fundamentals is shown at the right top corner on vital page. It has retrieved all the data. 
we can instantly see from the coloring that AT&T has optimal valuation. And when going through this, okay, JCOM is not showing up here. Maybe JCOM belong to another industry. Let me look at JCOM. JCOM.O, J2 Global has 14 peers. And now the peers are coming all belonging to the same country. Earlier, it was retrieving peers from other countries also, especially when peers in the same country were not so many. However, now, based on the rootstock, the industry peers are fetched only from the same country. Because most of the traders, Q traders, focus on one country, so we made that change. Now, JCOM instantly catches the eye. It has optimal relative valuation and internal valuation has the best possible score of 100. And we can see in this list of stocks, it has reasonably good growth as well. It also has some dividend. Not the best one, but it has some dividend. But if we trade this, we may trade it based on the valuation and also good growth, these two criteria from fundamental side. Technically, we saw it is forming a base. Now we are looking at the industries with biggest rank decliners. The home improvement industry, home improvement retailers is interesting. We had profitable long trades in some of these stocks, swing trades, I think last week or the week before. And now both Home Depot and Lowe's stopped at watermark resistance. And LL, Lumber Liquidator, formed a false upside breakout. All were found using industry drill down. Using Q Vital, you may see that Home Depot is very overvalued though it has good growth. On the other hand, Lumber Liquidators is overvalued and growth is poorest among these three stocks. Of course, three stocks is not a very big list, but at least among the stocks in this industry, it has the weakest growth, still overvalued very much. So we may keep an eye on Home Depot and Lumber Liquidator to see possible short opportunities at the top because both are at pendulum high. So let's look at them starting from Q edge. Home improvement retailer. It was very strong in the earlier months. We can somewhat in the middle then strengthened again for a few months and see over five days period, it has a very sharp decline in rank from 17 to 237. And the drop is holding over two days and one day period. So that caught my eye. I am always interested to take a trade in an industry that is at a turning point and then look at stocks chart to see if that is also at a turning point. If we have multiple turning points aligned together, that is a nice way to have higher probability trade. So I drill down, clicking on this button, Home Depot and Low. Let's look at the PR group of Home Depot. It is able to find Lumber Liquidator as well. Now we are getting the vital statistics and instantly we can see Home Depot is overvalued both in terms of relative valuation and internal valuation, because we have only few stocks, four stocks, we have to be careful about interpreting the growth parameters from here. So for that, it is better to go to the fundamental info tab. And we see that Home Depot has pretty strong growth, 21%. EPS five years, about 20% EPS three years, and revenue growth is also significant, more than 6%. If we look at Lumber Liquidator though, earnings growth is not there, 
revenue growth over five years was strong, but over three years it has become negative. So in terms of growth, lumbar liquidator is certainly weak and weakest among these four stocks. If we go back to Q Vital, we see lumbar liquidator also has very high valuation. So if we combine the growth and valuation factors, then lumbar liquidator fundamentally is a better shot than Home Depot. And we put together some other useful information in Q Vital. We don't have to usually go to the other tabs. We can see its EPS is also negative. Whereas the other three stocks all has positive earnings. So lumbar liquidator in all respects fundamentally is the weakest. Let's look at the charts for Home Depot and lumbar liquidator. We see a bearish headwind was there in the weekly chart of Home Depot on this candle. It was associated with earnings. Since then, over many weeks, the high could not be breached. And now price came to that same high created by the bearish headwind, tried to breach it, but failed. So it was a false upside breakout in weekly chart accompanied by very high activity. The same thing played out in the daily chart. It tried to go above the high with very high activities over one, two, three, four, five days. And on Friday, it completed the false breakout. It had a bear release signal and it fell down with very high activity. So it has met all the requirements of box short trade setup, except the weekly candle color is not yellow. So under those circumstances, I wouldn't enter the trade immediately, but look for a possible trade using Q fine tune chart next week. If the weekly candle color was yellow, and the shape was not so indecisive, it was bearish, then I could take a short trade on Friday itself. It's overvalued, so that allows me to short the stock. Let's look at Lumbar Liquidator. Lumbar Liquidator doesn't have a double top in weekly, doesn't have any weekly bearish headwind, it went up sharply. Because it went up sharply, it is overvalued now, very overvalued. And we can see there is a sharp reversal in the weekly chart. In the daily chart, we can see more finer detail. And here we see that the false upside breakout is completed. On this day, it had very high activity also. It had a bear release signal. It was meeting all the conditions actually of the box short trade setup, except I don't know how was the color in the weekly chart at that time. Another thing to note, before applying a setup, we have to always ask what is the current market move? Box setup is designed for sideways market, not for a trending market. In Home Depot, it was moving sideways. So we were able to apply the box short unambiguous checklist. I will not take a box short trade setup on this candle because it was in an uptrending market. Box setup was not designed for that. What we may look for price to slightly go up, create a lower high and come down with a magenta color candle. That will give us a valid go with flow short trade. Or now if price goes back to the watermark level and comes back from there, then it may give us a box short trade setup. Right now we don't have any setup. Kamba liquidator is the weakest fundamentally. So you may keep an eye on this stock for potential short opportunity. That is all from the 
broad market sector and industry analysis. There are interesting insights always in QH. You can always sort it over five days. Look for strong stocks. Diversified chemicals. Over one day's weekend, our decision making is to be based on five days, but may do some further analysis on that. We can see several tire rubber. Tire rubber, you can keep an eye. It was weak for a long time. Energy stocks are going up for some time now. Let me do the reverse sorting. Either they are already magenta for a while or they are patchy. Magenta sand, magenta sand, not of interest to me. Whereas application software is interesting. It was strong for a long time, now declined heavily. So this may be an area to look for short opportunities. So let me just put them on QVITAL. Let's see if any weak fundamental stock is there. Not really. Not okay. Okay, it's refreshing the data. Okay. Mm, poor growth, Autodesk, which is negative. See now from the shade, I know that it is negative. It makes life simpler. In terms of valuation, none of them are overvalued. None of them are magenta. We may look at Autodesk and ANSS. ADSK, very solid company though, Autodesk. Okay, interesting. You may keep an eye on this. The weekly backdrop color is magenta, shape is bearish. Daily has given a flow magenta candle inside a triangle. Inside a triangle, so it's not going to be any valid standard trade setup now. And anyway, it is in uptrend but it is showing some weakness. See, earnings happened four weeks ago. Since then, it is not able to go up. And ANSS. Okay, this is definitely better. In fact, on Thursday, this is clearly a sideways market. I mentioned box is to be applied only in sideways market. We had a very nice bearish headwind, price drop. Then price tried to go back to the same level had a bearish shape candle, next day bear release, that is Thursday, with very high activity. That made the conditions of box short trade setup, it was sideways market, that trade was very profitable within one day. These are the best trades where industry is turning from strength to weakness, the stock was at pendulum high here, I think it was at pendulum high. Yes, green color, it was at pendulum high. Then it had a double top. Also, the double top was at a level where bearish headwind had come earlier. All the conditions were met. So that would be a very easy short trade to take using top-down approach, looking at fundamentals and then looking at technicals. Very beautiful trade. If we keep an eye on QH and drill down, there is no scarcity of trades in our trade set. That is all I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for joining. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great weekend and trade profitably.